the hardest part of dating and the things that I teach isn't people or reason that you don't really know what to do. A lot of it is just that you don't know, you, you're, you don't know how to handle pain and, and you're afraid to feel pain because your pain tolerance is low. And in this video, we're gonna talk about the most important skill to prevent getting played because a lot of times when we get played is because we're, we're postponing, we're kicking the can down the road of the inevitable. We are in denial and we let the, we, 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 we are in, because of our, because of our denial, we allow people to play us, to lie to us, to give us false hope, all because we don't want to confront reality. Um, and, and, and learning, learning this skill or insulation from getting played in will just make dating in general just much easier. And, and you know what? You will become, you look more attractive. Trust me when I say this to you. So let's watch this video. Don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe. And if any of you guys want to work with me on a one, go to mindfulattraction.org. And, um, and, and we're, we're creating our course, Emotional Mastery. It should be out in two or three weeks. Um, I've been doing a lot of meditation for this course. Um, so it, it is, it's going to be my, my best course to date people. Um, but it's one of those courses that you have to do what the course says. Stop watching my videos just for entertainment. Do what it says when I'm closing the channel, all right? So this video is gonna be partly about what I talk about in that course, but not entirely. So let's begin with the video. You see, in the field of mastery, right? In the field of learning skill, um, there's something called auxiliary skills. Auxiliary skills are additions to what you already know that will enhance everything else that you do. It's almost like a Super Saiyan or the Kaioken in Dragon Ball Z, where if you learn the Kaioken, your punches will be better, your defense will be better, you'll be quicker. In other words, it's like an overall holistic boost to the whole system. Example of that is if you're a jiu-jitsu guy, learning how to do yoga will improve your, your jiu-jitsu because it'll improve your flexibility. The first, one of the first known jiu-jitsu guys to do yoga as a practice for jiu-jitsu is, is, is Renzo Gracie from the um, um, Gracie family in Brazil. And they pretty much dominated um, all of jiu-jitsu, right? Another example of that would be if you, what's the other example that I was thinking of? <laughs> One is, let's just say you play basketball or any sport. Studies show that if you want to prevent injuries, being able to play multiple sports prevents injuries. Guys who play more than two sports have less injuries than guys who only play one sport. And the reason why they say is because when you do multiple sports, you build up different muscles and the, the little tiny things. But if you keep doing the same movement and you do the same sport, some other part of, parts of your muscles naturally are gonna get weakened. So playing multiple sports consistently will strengthen your whole body. That's an example of an auxiliary skill. Or if you're a basketball player, a lot of the best basketball players play soccer. Why? Because playing soccer is all about footwork. And a lot of those guys, a lot of the times, have amazing footwork, and they and they and it's it's, it's almost like they don't run; they glide, right? Like un, unknown skills that if you apply to whatever you're trying to do will help you. This is this is what is what it's all about. And if you like this video, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe, and check out and pre-order my courses, Emotional Mastery, and attend my seminar in London at the end of July. I'll see you there. Right. For example, with art. An auxiliary skill with art is anatomy, right? Learning how to, knowing anatomy full on is an auxiliary skill. Um, when it comes to basketball, an auxiliary skill would be learning how to shoot with one hand, right? Like form shooting, right? Foundational skills that enhances everything else, right? Um, and when it comes to dating and meeting people, that auxiliary skill is pretty much meditation is learning how to control your emotions. People, if you control your emotions, you control your perspective. You control your point of view. You control your attitude. And when it comes to meeting people, your attitude dictates almost dictates everything. Your attitude dictates how you receive negative feedback, how you receive positive feedback, and most importantly, how you deal with failure, right? Because a negative attitude naturally is very constrictive. 
is closed-minded, doesn't take feedback well, doesn't take failure well, and never learns from their failure. It's very fragile, right? But a positive attitude, a constructive attitude, not only gets hurt when, when they get, not only do they get, do they get hurt when they get rejected, which is natural, but also they grow from it. They don't allow that pain to create calluses, to create mental generalizations of people. You get played is because this type of person's horrible. You don't create those generalizations. You, you don't create unconscious biases towards those who hurt you. Because a lot of times we'll keep repeating those things that hurt us the most because we are unconscious. We, we don't want to be, we don't want to feel those emotions. And so unconscious, unconsciously without even knowing it, rather than feeling it consciously, your, the universe almost like creates, keeps recreating the events because you don't want to feel it, then you're going to feel it, you're going to feel it in a more direct and harsh way, right? But also it's, it's, it's important to help you prevent yourself from becoming bitter, right? You gotta understand there is a secret war going on. It is a secret war. It doesn't look like a war, but you have the battle scars. You have the pain, the projections, the, you getting played lied to. There's a lot of fucked up shit going on in the dating world. It just doesn't look like it because everyone has the face of impartiality, of goodness, and everyone virtue signals how nice they are by supporting the right causes. But a lot of the times people just use that as a shield, as a way to shield themselves from, from actual criticism and play the victim instead. So what you wanna do is rather than, is, is learning to cope with the inevitable failures and learning to cope with not allowing success to create an ego and not allowing success to create a separation between you and other people where you see yourself as the super attractive, I shall not be touched type of person. You know, like, like where you look down on people who don't measure up in, with your standard of beauty or youth, right? Because all of those things that you're holding on to to make you happy Eventually, you're gonna lose it. And what the fuck do you think is gonna happen when you lose it? You're gonna become unhappy. But now, this unhappiness will be an, un an unhappiness that you've been trying to avoid all of these years, and it'll accelerate. And what happens when you get older? The mind also, be just like the body becomes stiff and constricted, the mind also becomes constricted. And nothing is better than when you meet someone and they have a chilled attitude, right? When you meet someone, and they're laid back and relaxed, right? I tell people and my clients, the impression you want to give on the opposite sex isn't that you're funny, isn't that you're inter is not that you're interesting. That's completely outside of your control. You cannot control those types of qualities that you project onto people. But the one quality you could definitely project onto people consistently is that you are laid back, is that you're chilled out, is that you're not a defensive per person, is that you're relaxed. If you're able to, you're able to project that with everyone, everyone. And from that point of, from that projection, which is pretty much of your projection of your inner state, because think about it. If you, you could tell when someone's anxious by their face, you could, you could tell, right? You could tell when someone is insecure, right? It's very easy. They have cues. It leaks out. Calm confidence also leaks out. Just like arrogance leaks out. The calm confidence leaks out. It's just not that overt, right? It's not something that you can instantly spot, like a smile. You can't just spot it instantly. It's the spot, smile is one expression that you can tell from far away. You can't instantly tell when somebody's chilled. It takes a little bit longer, but anything good takes time, right? And that impression is not an impression that you should be self-aware of. You should be like, am I coming across as chilled and relaxed? Am I coming across? No, no, no. You shouldn't be self-aware of that impression. That impression should be something that you're so, you're just so chill, you're not aware of how you're coming across. And other people tell you that. Because when you become aware of that, you, you all of a sudden stop listening. You become self-absorbed. And that self-absorption will naturally create a dialogue in your mind where you, where, you, where you actually stop listening to the person. You stop paying attention to their nonverbal cues and you become self-absorbed. The thing is when you're chilled out, you naturally, your attention is outward. Your attention is more on the person you, because you feel secure. Inside of you, there's no internal dialogue of insecurity. It's just a complete relaxation, right? Just complete silence. And the only sound you hear is the sound of the person. The only thing you see is not your, your mental projection of how you're coming across. 
The only thing that you see is their nonverbal cues, their face, the little twitches of the face, little looking around, the little backing away, the little scratches, the little hints, and you start making an unconscious connection about this person, not in a judgmental way, but from pure observation. And people can sense that, that you're there, that you're listening. There's a big difference. You know, we may not be, we, we may not be consciously aware when someone's listening, but we are pretty much, your body knows because it reacts, where you just relaxed around this person and there's a lot of things, a lot more things about the non-verbal aspect of communication, which you can actually purchase my course on the description. That purchase my my um, London seminar. I'm going to London at the end of July. You can click on the description down below to purchase those tickets. It's about non-verbal communication. But let's go to a quick commercial break. All right, guys, we're gonna have a brief intermission. So I could tell you guys about our new bundle that we're doing where you guys can purchase all of my courses and get it at a discount. So this bundle is pretty much um, the bundle where you could just buy all of my courses. You could buy um, Nice Guy, which is a training course on how to come across more assertive, how to come across more confident, um, how to not give off Nice Guy vibes. You guys can get access to Dark Game, um, which is my folk dating course on how to meet women in different scenarios, how to attract women, how to make sure you don't come across as creepy, and essentially how to act like a man and not act like a doofus, to be quite honest with you. Um, and you get all of these bonuses, which is the bonuses of Dark Game, the bonuses of Practical Mastery, uh, which is about how to master a skill, Social Mastery, which is how to master your social life, and the Laws of Human Nature, which is a book club video that I had dissecting Robert Greene's book. You, all of this is naturally at around 238, 200, no, naturally is at $346, but you guys can purchase this bundle and get it at, what, what's the price again? Uh, get it at um, two, 238, pretty much. Um, so you guys can purchase it right now. Um, it's a money, money back, 30 day money back guarantee. Uh, it's a good way to rather than just buying them individually and paying extra you guys can just purchase everything at a discount price now the only thing i don't like is the fact that i'm giving you a lot of information at the same time that makes me kind of scared because a lot of times people don't do the things that i teach when i when you get too much information but i've gotten too many requests to do this so i'm just satisfying you guys purchase it right now by clicking on the description down below where it says purchase the bundle all right let's continue with the video so in order to achieve this relax, relax attitude and this important skill, because it's pretty much the most important skill to learn in dating, to be honest with you, the way that you do that is to, the, to, to develop a meditation practice, right? Pretty much you develop a meditation practice In that meditation practice, you gotta, you have to be determined. It comes with a certain level of de determination. You can't just say, oh, I'm, I'm going to meditate. No, it, it has to come with a certain level of determination, a certain level of, 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 of I was going to say, passive aggressive, a passive aggressive, passive aggressiveness, but with a certain level of relaxed aggressiveness where you're just tackling this. I remember, I remember when I was, uh, when I started getting into spirituality, especially Christianity, I was 13 years old and my goal i used to hear stories of people that i knew that would pray for seven hours a day and i wanted to do that um and i didn't know how to do that so i remember going up in my room the first day i started i did like 30 minutes prayer and then i read the bible for like 20 minutes and i didn't like that i was like i want more i want to do more i want to increase it and over the years i just i will i will pray and it was hard but i just had that i was like i, I I, I could get it. I, I'm. A, I want to get this. I had. Like, I remember feeling an intense determination to the point where I would sleep in the bed as a as a as a meditate as a ritual as a spiritual thing. I wouldn't. I would make. I would put myself in uncomfortable positions, and and pray and not sleep. Not sleep in my bed. I would sleep on the on the on the floor as a way of sacrificing myself. I would. I would not. I would fast for hours, days, sometimes, as a meditation and as a way. Of, of sacrificing myself but that didn't come easy like it wasn't like I just could do it it was because I, I couldn't do it and I wanted to do it and that desire that intense desire to actually want to do this made me actually push myself to the limits 
And so one of the things that I've learned is that you could do more than you think you could. Like, it's just, you don't want it bad enough. It's just as simple. And you have to find a reason why you want to do this in order to gain this skill. And I remember when I used to teach, when I still do, but teaching guys, talking to girls, it, a lot of guys got into spirituality and meditation because they knew this fact that if you're more relaxed, girls like you more. Pretty fucking simple. And a lot of us got into meditation, people. Like, I remember they, some, of, some of us would go to meditation retreats, come back, talk to girls, and they even said, yeah, there's a big difference. Women like you more. It, it, was, a, it was an undeniable fact. It was actually like, it was, it, was a, it was a fact that if you learn to meditate and you did it consistently, you were going to give off a chilled attitude that women liked. It was, it was just that simple. It was, and, so we just, and so people just got into it. And I got more into spirituality because of it, people. But then after a while, the more you're in it, it there was like a, 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 um, a metaphor in Zen where this guy said, I forgot the story, but the point is that the Zen master said, you know what, every time you, every time you pray, I'm gonna give you one dollar as an example, right? I was like, oh really? He was like, yeah. Every time you pray, come, come to me and I'll give you a dollar. The first day he did it, he came back and gave him a dollar. Second day, came back, gave him a dollar. After the fourth date, he was like, okay, where is this person? You know, this person hasn't come yet. To find out, this person was actually praying the whole time and he just forgot about the money and he didn't care about the money anymore. And it's, it's, it's a similar fashion, right? It's literally, it's, it's literally the same thing where you could start off doing meditation for the purpose of improving your dating life and you really could. But over time you'll notice that there's a piece that is, that you're feeling that you want to keep. There's going to be a, a, an intense, peaceful environment within you that you will want to maintain. And the only one to maintain that is through more meditation. And, it, it like, and there are so many levels to it, to be honest with you. But start off with, with the habit of five minutes a day. Give it a try for like a month, right? Just stick to five minutes in the morning. If you want to do more, do more. But just make sure you get the five minutes and you, let's just say you want to do 10 minutes, get up, do something and then do 10 minutes, but just stick with the five minutes. Let's always make that consistent. And if you just keep it a five minutes every morning for like a month and you notice in yourself that you could keep doing it, then do 10 minutes, but don't do 10 minutes until you do 30 days of five minutes. Now, what I do is you could increase your tolerance to meditate because the truth is the more you meditate the easier it gets to meditate longer and and also you might say i'm wasting my time meditating no meditation actually and you could and this is something that i talk about in my course meditation is actually something that the more you meditate the less sleep you need studies have shown that monks they sleep four three or four five hours a day if you meditate for like an hour or two a day you're gonna get it back because you're because you're, you're gonna need less sleep. It's as simple as that, it's not, you're not losing time. And then you're actually gaining the peace of mind, get the fuck out of here, All right? So you could join ashrams, you could join meditation sessions where they do one hour meditation sessions. And you'll notice that if you go do it in a group and, and then you go back and meditate alone, you meditate for longer periods. Or go to meditation retreats, or better yet, do a 10 day Vespasa silent, silent retreat. Um, those things are there to isolate that muscle of meditation, right? Um, it's almost like, how can I say this? It, it, it's almost like being a self-taught artist, right? If you're an artist and you learn by yourself, doing what I'm telling you, I'm teaching you how to be, become a self-taught meditator, right? And something that I do know about it is that self-taught artists don't have the same discipline as painters who went to an atelier and they were forced to draw and it paint for eight hours a day. Like it, like a lot of times people don't do that. It's the same thing with meditation, is that you're gonna meditate on your own maybe 30 minutes, 40 minutes a day, Realis realistically, maybe more, but you will never get as much meditation done as opposed to if you go to a retreat and you'll notice that you meditate more. So I, I recommend that, that will expand how much you can actually meditate and it'll make your life so much more enjoyable and your dating life, you'll notice that it'll just go smoothly because it's not gonna hurt that much. 
And when you're not, when, when you know that somebody cannot hurt you, they have no control over you and thus make some chase more. All right. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I attend my meditation meetups. No, not my meditation meetups. I attend my seminar in London um, at the end of the at the end of, the, uh, of July. I'm actually doing a 10 day Vipassana meditation retreat at, in the middle of June. So I'm gonna postpone my the release of the complete course, Emotional Mastery, for the end of June. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna release the first few parts at the beginning of June. Um, and hit the like button, subscribe to the channel. And if you guys need one on one coaching, go to mindfulattraction.org. I'm on vacation, people, so you guys can call me more. But on this vacation, I'm actually doing three hours, three, four hours of daily meditation. So it's not like I'm just having vacation. I'm actually being productive here. All right. Anyways, take care.